Hello everyone. I'm so excited to talk to you today about Blitz.js and the future of full stack web development. But first, let's talk about where we are today. We live in an amazing time to be a JavaScript developer. React was released only seven years ago, and it's pretty crazy to think about what all has been built on top of React and what applications have been built with React. So the other thing is the tools like uh, Create React App and Next.js were released already four years ago. And now we have even so many more amazing uh, packages, libraries, frameworks that allow us to build great applications. We have amazing technologies like TypeScript, uh, GraphQL, so many great CSS and JS libraries, form libraries, and the list goes on and on, right? Uh, we have um, service or services like Vercel and Netlify that make it so easy to deploy full stack applications. And so this is such a great time. And it seems like with all these things, it should be very easy to build a full stack React application from scratch. However, when you sit down to actually do that, it's not very easy. So the first thing you have to decide is what framework are you going to use, right? So uh, are you, will you use Create React App or Gatsby or Next.js? And how do you know? Like this is a big decision and you don't wanna mess it up, right? So that's just the first thing. And then once you figure that out, then there's like a hundred other decisions that you have to make after that about file structure and code formatting and all these things. And you have so many tools to configure like your testing setup, ESLint, Husky hooks, probably prettier. Um, and it just goes on and on. There's so much work. There's too much work before we can even focus on building the code for our application. So I like to think about what would this look like if it was easy? And what I think this would look like is that there would be one de facto framework for building full stack React applications. Maybe two, but ideally one. Other communities like uh, Ruby on Rails and Laravel are thriving on a full stack framework, right? They're so productive and we don't have this for JavaScript and React. And many of us have been feeling the need for this, you know, for quite some time. And so this is why I set out to build Blitz.js about two and a half months ago. And people are so excited about it. We've already had over 50 people from around the world that are contributing to Blitz itself. And, you know, there's a lot of buzz around it. So I'm so excited to talk to you about it today. So what is Blitz? Blitz is a framework for building full stack React applications. So it covers everything from end to end. It starts with your database all the way to your front end and everything in between. And Blitz is built on top of next.js, which is a really amazing React framework. And so everything that next provides like data hooks, um, routing based on your file system, um, really great performance, static uh, page generation. All of this comes out of the box with Blitz. Blitz doesn't restrict uh, any of that from you. But Blitz adds a lot of things on top of Next that is out of the scope of Next. And But it's things that we need to build a full stack application and things to make it easy to build a full stack. So what does it look like to... Um, start a new Blitz application. So the first thing is npm install dash g Blitz. And you install the global CLI, which is, has many, many useful uh, commands. So the first thing is Blitz new my app. And this is going to generate a new application for us. Um, you can see there's a, quite a few files here and that's because it already has everything you need already configured for you and set up and working together. So this includes ESLint, uh, prettier, Husky Git hooks, the Git repository is initialized. Um, we don't have yet, but it's coming, um, a testing infrastructure already set up. And so you have this really nice uh, starting point for building a full stack application. Um, so let's, let's go into this app and run blitz start. And we'll let this boot up. 
So we've worked really hard to make this, make the logging as beautiful as we can. You probably saw here with the, as we created this. So let's open this up. Okay, so we have this nice starting page. Um, and this is full stack, so it starts with your database. And so we'll follow the instructions here. So let's go open our database schema file. So Blitz comes by default with Prisma 2, which is not related to GraphQL at all. Prisma 2 is a database client. And so it gives us the schema file, and we're going to define a project model. And that has an ID attribute and a name attribute. And so this is going to create a database with this table and, and columns. So now we run blitz db migrate. And hit yes. And now we have a database already uh, migrated, initialized, ready to use for us. And that was so easy, right? So the, the first thing I like to do is I want to look at my database and I want to add some data to it before I even start writing code. So how you would do this today is you would have to go Google and try to find some application that allows you to view the database, like a, a graphical user interface for your database, right? Um, like, and it's probably going to be uh, clunky, hard to use, ugly, um, and it's just just a pain, really. So what would this look like if it was easy? And the answer is that it would be one command to start a database viewer. So something like blitz db studio. And this is going to start up this really nice a database viewer. And this is provided by Prisma 2. And it's so awesome. It's built right into Blitz. So you can see we have a project table and the ID column and a name. So let's add a record here. So React Europe. And we will create that. And there, we already have a row, row in our database. You know, it's so easy. And this gives you, like, you can... Um, filters, search, and, and all that type of things. So let's go back. So and now the now we need to um, write some code to access the database, right? So how you would do this today is you write everything by hand. Um, and so you have to figure out your own like um, architecture. How are you going to access the database? Um, your files, your file structure, um, and there's a lot of decisions and things you have to figure out on your own because there's no standard way to do it. So again, what would this look like if it was easy? One command. So in a blitz app, you can run blitz generate all. It's going to generate all the possible files. And we'll give it the, the model name. And this will generate a number of files here, and it's all ready to go for you. So there's pages, queries, and mutations. We'll look at uh, a query here. So get project query. So this is the code that is going to run on the server. Okay, so remember, this is a full stack application. So um, you can see we're importing the database. And then we're exporting a plain JavaScript asynchronous function called get project. And it, it calls the database as database.project.find1. It gets a project and it returns it. And this is, um, you know, eventually you'll add other things in here like authorization, uh, maybe like event triggers or something. But to get started, like this is all it takes. So this is good. Um, but now we need to get this database or this data to the front end, right? So how would we do this today? Um, we could use REST or GraphQL, um, probably one of those. So if we were going to do a uh, use GraphQL here inside of Next for a full stack application, uh, we would have to install Apollo server. 
configure that, set it up to run with the, the serverless function, we would have to write our server schema, the data, the data schema of the GraphQL API. Um, and then we, this, we already have a resolver here that we could use, resolver. Um, and then we need to install Apollo Client on the front end and configure that and set that up. And then we need to write the query. Um, and then finally, after all of that, it will have it working, but we're also using TypeScript and we need types. So we'd also have to set up GraphQL code generator, which is a whole other uh, thing. And then it's another thing to run in the terminal all the time because it's constantly recompiling your types um, anytime something changes. And frankly, that's too hard. So again, what would this look like if it was easy? Well, the easiest thing that I could think of was to import this server function directly into your front end and just use it like a normal function, right? Like that is, that is so simple. So let's go to our project page where we're going to display a project. So this is normal. Uh, this is a React page, a next.js page. We have React, React components in here. So notice up here at the top that we are importing get project from a, directly from that file that we were just in. Um, this is just a straight function import. This is not generating a generated a uh, file. Um, so inside our component here, we're getting you know using the router. We have the hook, the use router hook, and we get the ID of the route. And then we call this use query hook that's provided by Blitz. And it's actually built on React query. So we pass in that query function. So remember, this is the server code we've imported here. And we pass it into the use query. And then the arguments, which is to get the ID, uh, project where the ID is equal to the ID of this route. Um, so this looks like it shouldn't work, right? Like we should get a compile error or something. Uh, but let's let's try it and see what happens. So we're going to run blitz start. And let this load. Okay, now we're going to go to slash projects. And wow, we have a working app. So let's reload. And you can see that it's, it's loading this data on the client side. So this is pretty awesome. It's so easy. So what's actually happening here? So at compile time, we take this direct function import and we swap it out with an HTTP API. And we call that API for you automatically from the, from the front end. And so as a developer, you don't have to think about an API, REST or GraphQL, nothing. All you think about is your server code and your front end code. And you just use it. And then like the data, we take care of getting the data where it needs to go for you. Um, and so I want to reiterate that this is not server side rendered. This is client rendered. You can see the loading screen showing up there. Um, now you could, you could server render this using get server side props or you could generate, generate it statically with get static props. Um, so you can do any of these on a per page basis. It's up to you to decide which page um, it does, you know, does which, whether it's SSR, a client rendered or static. So um, this, is, this is the biggest feature of Next.js. Um, and then queries work the same way. So let's go look at this delete project mutation. Again, this is a very simple uh, function that's going to run on the server. And it does database delete, same thing. And then we import it in the, uh, the component. And then down here for mutations, uh, there is no use query hook. And so this is just calling that, you know, it appears to be calling that server function directly from the front end. But again, we swap it out at compile time with an actual HTTP API. So one thing that's, there's multiple things that are great about this. 
Um, but one thing, especially for TypeScript users, is that your types work statically. So you don't need GraphQL code generator or any other kind of um, runtime process to like generate the types for you because the types are already there defined statically. And so it's so nice. Um, so, well, we have, we have this running, but it's, uh, doesn't look great, right? Um, and let me show you. So we actually generate all the pages for you. So you can like create a new item. Um, you could edit it, delete it, go back. And, and now there's, uh, there's two things, two items there. So let's say um, I want to install, I want to install Tailwind. So how this would look today is you would go to next.js, uh, the repository, and you have to find that example. So find file, tailwind, um, and while wow, there's a bunch of tailwinds, um, with tailwind a CSS, okay, so you're going to find this, this example. These examples are really great, by the way. Um, but the, the, the challenge is that you have to go in and find which files are unique. And then you have to go in and copy and paste this over to your project and back and forth and make sure you don't miss anything and get it right. Um, so what we are doing with a blitz app is we're going to make that again, as easy as possible, one command. So blitz install tailwind. So, um, this is not working. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, okay. So this is going to be one command, but uh, wasn't um, or it was going to be just Tailwind, but it's not production ready yet. So this is a demo. Um, so we're going to um, one command here, and it's going to install the dependencies that you need. We need to fix the, the contrast here, but it's installing um, Tailwind CSS, the post CSS uh, plugins that you need, uh, and then it's going to create a couple files for us. Um, you're just going to create the index.css, button CSS, a couple files to get you started, and then it's going to add the import um into your document page and that's it you're ready to go so we can run blitz start and let's go to pages or project project index um we have that list and let's add class name um Let's do like background blue uh, 500. And uh oh, we have an issue. Uh oh, not good. Um, Uh, looks like the um, implementation for this changed. Ah, yes. So um, the bug will get fixed. There will be one command. Um, so let's go back to our projects. Yes, yeah, so you can see I have the, the Tailwind CSS class here, and you can see it, it is applied. So we're so excited about this. Um, and what's really exciting is that we're talking to the Gatsby team to reuse their Gatsby recipes um, package. So they have a really nice uh, UI, and uh, they're using MDX to define the recipes. And we're talking about how we can reuse that and extract it out into a shared package. 
so that you can write Gatsby recipes in the same way that you would write Blitz recipes. So we're really excited about this. Um, and you know, you can imagine having like thousands of these recipes, right, to install anything you can imagine. And you could compose different recipes together to have like your own custom starter kit. Um, and you can install things like uh, style components, emotion, any, anything like all these different tools and stuff that it can just be one command to install it and configure it. So we're really excited about this. Okay, so um, one other thing I want to show you here is how often have you tried to, like let's say you, you're having some code that's it's, you're, it's not working right, you're, you need to, it's, um, it's some code that you wanna run like without having to, to run it in your project and compile it and test it in the browser. Like you wanna be much more quick, right? And that's what the node REPL is for. So like if you do in the console run node, and then you can do like one plus one, right? It's just a node REPL. But how many of you, how many of you have tried to um, import your, like run your project code in here? Is really difficult, right? Like it'll um, complain about uh, yes, modules not working, import, export, and all this stuff, and like it's almost impossible. It's it's so hard, but we're making this so easy with Blitz because we know like what your project is is mostly structured like, and so this is going to be as easy as one command, Blitz console. And this loads all the commands, uh, and all, all the code, I'm, excuse me, all the code, all your project code automatically. So like your queries, your mutations, your database. So we can do db.project.findmini, and we can log that out. And there you can see that the, um, you're getting the data directly from the database, right? This is so easy and so nice to play around and test the output of things, the input. Um, so you also have your queries. So let's do get projects. And console.log. And it's the same thing because that query is returning, you know, the database. Um, but then you can also do mutations. So um, let's do delete project and see if I can remember this, the input. I think it's where ID equals two, then dot console dot log. Okay, so I just deleted it. Now we have history, right? So you can um, you can go back in your, your history and let's get the projects in there. It's only one. Right, this is so, so nice. Um, so currently, you, uh, t top level await does not work. You have to use dot .den, um, but we're working on getting making that work. It works, but it, it breaks, it works on Mac OS, but it breaks on Linux and Windows. And so there's an open issue for this, if anyone wants to help us. So, let's close this. Where do we go from here? Well, we just released the very first alpha version two weeks ago. And I'm sorry, excuse me, three weeks ago. So it's still very early and we have so much left to build and so much polish and things, but it is usable today. So you can go install Blitz, you can create a new application and you can actually, it does actually work. So there's probably some bugs. There are bugs, I know. Um, there's rough edges, you know, it's not polished. So what you see today is not our envision, um, but it's a good starting point. So the, the future we are building is one where Blitz does all of the mundane and menial tasks for you. Like all the projects set up, right? And configuring build tools, 
and all that stuff. And so Blitz does all this for you as much as possible. And then that frees you up to focus on uh, what on the code that makes your application unique, right? Like the code that, um, this is the code we all enjoy writing and the problems that we enjoy thinking about solving. Like we don't enjoy thinking about solving a Webpack problem, right? Or a build tool problem, at least most of us. Um, we enjoy solving problems for the application that we're building and we're like solving problems for the end users of our application. So um, we're going to have a huge ecosystem of the installer recipes like I showed you. Um, and then not only that, we'll have a huge ecosystem of plugins. So the first plugin will be Prisma. 2, right? So Prisma 2 comes by default with Blitz, currently is tightly integrated, but Prisma will be moved to a, to a plugin. And then we can have, uh, we can swap Prisma with any other plugins, like a plugin for Fauna DB or a plugin for, um, you know, any other database a solution. And then we'll have plugins for all other sorts of things. Plugins can hook into various parts of the life cycle of your application. It can um, hook into the CLI, it can add templates. Uh, so you can generate, you can create your create your own like um, Blitz generate component and customize that to be exactly what you want for your project. So some other uh, major features that we have coming um, that are, don't exist today. The biggest one is authentication, right? Everybody loves to build authentication. No? Okay. <laughs> yeah, me neither. So uh, this is, we're working on this and we have an RFC open on our GitHub repo for session management. And this session management is set up to work with any identity provider, right? So you can plug in Auth0 or you can uh, have your own username and password, et cetera. So we're working on that already, probably be a few weeks until that's ready to go. Um, we're gonna be adding authentication, um, authentic or sorry, authorization. So these are authorization rules that you can use on the server and on the client. So the same thing, but you can reuse that logic. Uh, we'll be adding model input validation. So the same thing, you can validate the input on your server and in your React forms. Um, we're gonna be adding custom templates so you can eject the, uh, the, the templates and customize them to be exactly what you need for your project, right? Because the default templates don't know what you're trying to build. Um, we're gonna be adding a really nice testing infrastructure to new apps, and then you can add that to your generators too. So you, when you generate a query, it automatically generates the test for that query. Um, we're adding a graphical user interface, and that's already being worked on. Um, and so this allows you to do everything you, the, that you can with the CLI, but using a, a graphical user interface like an application. Um, and we're also adding support for React Native. So this is something that I'm really excited about personally. And the dream is that you can have one Blitz application at your back end, and then you have multiple front ends, right? And, but additionally, that you can have the no API experience with your React Native app so that um, the, the goal is that we can import that server function directly into a component in your React app and then have that work swapped out for an API at build time. So I'm pretty sure that we're going to make that, that we can make that happen. Um, and so that's one thing we're, we're going to be working on. Additionally, I want to add offline support. Um, and make that very easy because so many applications are needing some type of offline support these days. And this is a problem that the framework should solve, should do the hard work so that it can be easy for you, the end developers. So we need you to help us make this a reality. Um, there's so much work left to do and we are always accepting new contributors and there's a lot of work to do. We have a really fun community working together on this. We have a weekly contributor call uh, that anyone can join and you can watch the recordings too. Um, so if you're interested in helping, definitely get in touch. So I want to leave you with this. 
Don't settle for hard to use. Push for easy. Don't settle for complicated. Push for simple. Don't settle for ugly. Push for beautiful. You know, our tools should make us smile. They should be fun to use. They should make us productive. So I invite you to join us. Give Blitz a try. Join our Slack community and help contribute to Blitz itself. Let's make Blitz the best framework that has ever existed. Thank you. All right, Brandon. Um, that was a great talk and very inspiring. I'm a huge fan just after this talk of Blitz. Um, by the way, very beautiful logging on the startup. Uh, uh, very cool. Uh, I'm excited to see the tackling of the issues that Blitz addresses. Um, I'm a developer advocate, React developer, and I love the many different options uh, for React development. But for a moment, I want to play devil's advocate and challenge the one over many idea, especially in the React community where having many options is encouraged and, in my honest opinion, a feature of React and its ecosystem. Don't you think that the friendly competition, if you want to even call it that, is a reason why we have so many great options out there and having one de facto thing for full stack could be limiting? Yeah, great question. Um, so I, I think we've had lo a long enough period since React was, was released for a lot of that experimentation and things to like play out. And now a lot of, it, it's a lot more, um, we have less like, um, major innovations. And so, you know, I mean, and there's still room for Blitz as a framework to evolve. Um, but, you know, I, I addressed this more in our manifesto that we linked to, kind of talks a little bit about this, but there's this process of bundling and unbundling that kind of repeats where you unbundle, there's lots of different like various services you can pick and choose. And then um, and then there's like cycle of bundling where you have one thing that wraps or you know like integrates multiple things together. So this is I think is a time for a bundling and re the React ecosystem, which we haven't had as of yet. Good. All right. Um, a question from Swix. I wanted to lead into that one. Um, I'll go ahead and let him uh, ask that one. Oh, hey, uh, pretty simple. Um, how will you make Blitz development sustainable, uh, aka um, where do I pay? <laughs> sure. So uh, currently, I'm spending approximately 40 hours per week on Blitz, and then about 20 hours per week um, doing consulting. So that's how I'm funding my uh, development on it. And then we just have a lot of other contributors that are contributing their time in the free time. Um, and you know, potentially, probably at some point, we'll have either spin up some services and businesses around Blitz or something. Like we'll make sure that you know this is that there's some some sustainability in here. Um, but ultimately, Blitz will be a community-run project, similar to like Ember has been a huge inspiration. Great. Um, someone asked on the uh, Discord, is there GraphQL in there or not? I, I'm assuming he means. It's kind of bundled into Blitz? As yeah, a good question. Currently, there is not. The queries and mutations are just a naming convention. Um, but we have designed it in such a way that we can later um, either automatically or semi-automatically generate a GraphQL API for you. So we're not anti-GraphQL, um, but we're anti-complexity and boilerplate and so forth. So we would, we would love to add this at some point. Um, so on, on the database side, um, which databases does it support? It seems that, uh, it works with, uh, anything that Prisma supports out of the box. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. So, um, it, well, actually semi-correct Prisma two supports Postgres, my, my SQL and SQLite currently, and they're, they'll be adding support for others. So that's like the default of functionality, but you can easily just throw Prisma out the window and use Fauna or like something Mongo or anything. Couchbase, like something like that. Yeah, the DB <laughs> layer, uh, Blitz is DB agnostic, but we'll be adding plugin support to make it easy to integrate 
uh, various databases. Yeah, that kind of leads into my next question is, uh, how could I contribute and um, add like a connector for my database? Um, I mean, obviously I want to try and get in on the weekly contribution call or contributors call. Um, so where can we find links for that? And uh, sure. how easily would it be to, you know, uh, add another database, you know? So the um, best place to start for contrib contributing, there is a contributing.md in the root of the repo. And Perfect. that has, like, it's a good onboarding. It has links to the air times for the onboarding call. And then the actual Zoom Great. link will be a Slack. Um, as far as integrating database, um, you could contribute an example app right now to the main repo for, for what it looks like to integrate with Couchbase today without a plugin. And then probably within a, a couple months, we'll have plugin support ready where it could, we could have like a Blitz a plugin Couchbase. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Um, I have another question. I'm going to try and get this one right. Um, it's kind of piggybacks off of the database question. Um, if you have not much experience with, say, Postgres, can you still easily use it? It's not about experience. was wondering if I could easily migrate an existing application, which is Meteor and Mongo-based. Um, so I don't know what your application currently is. But if it's built yeah. on Next, then it's relatively straightforward. Um, and you can still use existing third-party APIs or like GraphQL or REST or anything with Blitz. Like Blitz doesn't get in the way of that. Well, well let's look at that question a little bit uh, closer. And, and there's there's two words in there that I think conflict with each other, easily and migrate. So, <laughs> you know, migrations typically are not that easy um, if you're going from one framework to another. So I would say, you know, that's always going to be hard. Um, yeah. But... Um, I, I'm interested in kind of uh, seeing this. This is one of the, uh, you know, there's been a few really exciting things here and this is definitely one of them. So uh, I, I didn't want you to take that question I had uh, beginning the wrong way. I'm totally on board. Um, but at the same time, like I, I do think that the React ecosystem kind of benefits from having multiple things out there. You know, that's kind of how we, you know, create React app next. Um, uh, all these things kind of, just give us these different options and, and there's a little bit of a competition in there and and kind of always trying to one up or create parity with the other or whatever it is. And I think that that benefits the entire community. So that's all I was yeah. trying to get at, but. So yeah. um, to that point, um, we, we say that Blitz is has loose opinions. That's one of our like foundational principles. So we have some opinions, but they're loose. So we don't require, there's not very, very little that we actually require. Um, and then we still, so where there's not consensus, a community consensus on like a tool of library, like that's totally up to you. So like styling libraries, like we're not choosing the one you have to use. Um, yep. And, but we'll add plugins and things for that to make it really easy to install whatever you want. So yeah, so you, have strong, you have strong opinion, but loosely held. Uh, I'm not, I wouldn't <laughs> even say, say strong opinion. <laughs> Um, Except considering for that, that it shouldn't you be complicated. To be... Oh yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, considering you want it to be mostly community run, is there a future roadmap somewhere like a Trello board that we can see, and is it transparent to the rest of the community? Um, so currently, the best like roadmap is on. We have a user guide that's linked to from the README, um, and the bottom of that has like a what's next. That's currently like a rough roadmap. Um, but really the roadmap, like the actual roadmap is up to you, the community, like, like I'm not here dictating, like here, this is where we're going. Um, eventually I want to move to more, a more like, um, shared governance, uh, situation, more like Ember or something. So sure. there's currently three, three core team members, but. Okay. Um, uh, you, Patrick, if we have time for two more, go ahead. Yeah. Are you, are you talking to other similar project that surprisingly have have been announced almost at the same time as yours, like Redwood JS and yes, Remix. That was one of my next questions, actually. How would it compare to Redwood? Are you Although talking Remix, to uh, Remix is, is it's a bit weird because I think it's it's not open source, and I don't know how. I I'm not clear on the vision for Remix, but from my perspective, it looks like a competitor to Next. So it looks like it's still on the same level as Next versus at the level of Blitz. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I think you're right. And Redwood, I think the Redwood project is is great. I think they're they're like solving the hard problems with GraphQL, which you know I I think for a lot of many yeah. apps, um, GraphQL is is not needed for like 99% of the businesses that have less than 100 employees or less than 50 employees. Um, but you know maybe there's opportunity for. I us think that to depends on how you use it as future. well. Yeah. Um, absolutely. I guess it's not for every API, but uh, GraphQL can be used in so many ways that, um, you know, it kind of depends on how you're using it. Another question from Marcine from the um, Discord chat is, um, having a complete stack put together is great. Any plans to have some place to conveniently deploy the whole stack? Any plans for that? Maybe collaboration with Vercel? Um, I'm not sure if I've heard of that one, but um, yes. Going in. So it's, it's the uh, site. Yeah, uh, we we currently have a PR open to add first class Blitz support to Vercel, so that it'll just deploy automatically, like next would. Um, and yeah, we're going to be working on guides and things on deploying it to Render to DigitalOcean and so forth. Because right now, like serverless is great, but there's still like some database issues and it gets kind of complicated. So we're we're working on this and trying to make it as as good as we can. Is it possibly? Uh, have, yeah. Go ahead. Um, you have plenty to support. Uh, I don't know if you've mentioned it. Uh, Web sockets easily, like streaming. Um, currently, we we support whatever Next.js does. So um, we're we're looking into like how to support a custom server and so forth to make that to make that nice, um, but. Like the for serverless, the best option is to use um, like the the polling. So you, you know, and that's built in. We have that because of React Query, and so you can have that revalidation, live updates, etc. Um, I, I should. Um, I, I spent some time looking into Redwood, um, so may, maybe I could just also offer that um, you know Blitz uses Next.js for its for its server side rendering, uh, whereas Redwood uh, basically also replaces that layer. And does his own uh, rendering, um, basically all client side. Um, they they might they might do server side or static rendering later on, but uh, right now they don't, and that's uh, that's a pro pro and a con. Um, Blitz benefits from Next.js's investments and and speed and all that, uh, but uh, but Redwood is able to uh, integrate deeper within its routing uh, and data layers, um, and also they have uh, some other strong opinions like how to do forms. Like they have a whole form library just thrown in there <laughs> and uh, blitz doesn't have one so i think they're using a rag hook form mm. uh you're right yeah they're, they're wrapping they're wrapping that but like blitz is like not opinionated on that at all i think it's also interesting that um you know as much as react is like the consensus on the front end uh prisma seems to be the emerging consensus on the back end for for database yep. uh, integrations both blitz and redwood use prisma uh and that's a pretty positive sign for some for a company that you know just pivoted from prisma v1 um, so that's that's really it's really interesting to see. Do you plan to have a, a, a form library like you know, Rails or, um, or Redwood? Like? We so we're planning to add to make it so the, the installer recipes will have those for different form libraries, and then we're going to try to integrate like form forms with our uh, file generator somehow, so that it's so that you can get like a nice experience of defining your own form. Um, in your like your field components, but yeah, still being able to use the generators to add fields to your forms. So the form generator will will be pluggable with like you want to use yeah. final form or right form. Is that, is that the plan? Right. So you could you could use whatever form you wanted to, formic or final form or anything. Okay. Yep. Big fan of final form. Um, is it possible to briefly discuss how the security considerations are handled in moving data from the back end to the client? So the best place to, to go for that is the RFC um, on our GitHub. It's a PR, and it's called RFC Session Management. And it's quite in-depth. Uh, we have two levels of security, like a, a, a um, an essential version and an advanced version, for depending on your, your requirements. Uh, but we, we go into detail on that, and you're welcome to comment and give us feedback. And we are looking for uh, like people to do security reviews. Yeah, it sounds like this project is very community friendly. All the things that you're talking about it sounds like you guys are doing all the right things. So definitely applaud for that. I'd clap, but it would uh, probably mess up, be loud on the microphone. But yeah, uh, definitely applaud you for that. 
Thank you very much. Community is, is very, very important to me. All right. I think we've exhausted all the questions that we had on all the platforms. If John, you'd like to take it from here and introduce the next speaker, it's on you.